If it's not on the calendar, it doesn't get done. This is a truism for many of us. The calendar is the centerpiece of our personal and productivity lives. If it doesn't get on the calendar, it's probably not going to happen. So it's really important for us to make sure that everything important gets on said calendar. How do we accomplish that? Well, in the Google world, Google Calendar has the ability to be integrated with a lot of different applications and a lot of different systems. And if you use that integration correctly, you can be far more organized and far more productive with far less stress in your life. That is our goal today to talk about Google Calendar integrations on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? And today we're going to be looking at how Google Calendar, at the heart of our own personal productivity system, can connect to so many other applications and services to make us more efficient. We're going to take a look at internal connections, ones that are within the Google ecosystem, and then we're going to talk about a lot of the different external apps to give you an idea of the different ways that different types of services will connect. Now, you might know some of these things that we're going to be showing, or some of them might be brand new. Regardless, if you tune up how Google Calendar works with the rest of your system, you are going to be a more productive, happier, healthier, less stressed individual, I believe. So let's dive into it and start talking about other applications within the Google ecosystem. So many of our obligations and appointments on our calendar end up starting out as an email that was sent to us. And so we wanna take the content of an email and we wanna turn that into an event on our calendar or an appointment on our calendar. And within the Google ecosystem, that is really easy. That's one of the really nice aspects of using Gmail and Google Calendar together is if you are editing any email, if you go into the more menu, you can take that email and create an event from it. When you create an event, a little bit of magic happens. First of all, Google takes that the title of the email, the subject of the email, and it makes it the title of the event. It adds in the guests any people who are added to that email thread. So if you wanna make changes to the appointment or set a time, you can automatically email them. So the integration goes two ways. All of the information from the uh, from the email gets published into Google Calendar, including the body of the text is included here in the notes within the within the calendar appointment. So you have all of that integration in place. And then if you decide that you're going to set a time for that appointment, which is the next thing that you would probably do is you want to set a time for it. And if it's going to be, say, a meeting, you can then save this. And when you go to save it, guess what happens? It will email back to the people who are in the email thread a time and send it out as a calendar invitation. And if you make a change to this appointment at some point in the future, they will be sent notification of the change of time should you choose to do that. And I think that's one of the most important integrations that we have for our Google Calendar. And it's something that I use on a daily basis. I imagine many of you do as well. Let's stay in the Google ecosystem for just a moment. When we look in the details screen of any appointment that we're creating within our Google Calendar, we can see that we can add a location. Now this location can be a meeting room if you happen to be inside of a building, or indeed it could be the address of an actual location. And if you type in uh, a building, or in my case, I'm gonna type in the BCIT, the British Columbia Institute of Technology, the name of a business, you can, it will then do a Google search and this is where it gets beautiful. It will tie that search to, look here, to Google Maps. So we can preview exactly what the location is in Maps. While we're still in calendar, we can preview it in Maps. We can get directions from here. And if we have set this up as an appointment where there's an assigned time for the meeting to happen at this location, then Google will let us know what time to leave the house based on traffic conditions and distance based on geographical information that it gets from Google Maps. I recently did a video on Google Maps and we talk about this in that video. You might want to check that out. So the second integration is between Google Maps and Google Calendar, where time and distance come together to inform us uh, when we need to leave and how we need to get to each appointment on time. Now that was just scratching the surface of what Google Calendar does with the other Google apps. Every app in the entire Google toolkit integrates in one way or another with Google Calendar, but now you have an idea of what you can do. I'd love to hear how you integrate Google Calendar with other Google apps. Maybe if there's a system that you use that I haven't talked about, share it in the comments. I'd love to hear how you're doing it. But now I wanna break away from the Google apps themselves and look at how Google Calendar integrates with other applications. 
I guess there's really two types of apps that we're going to take a look at. One type of app extends the capability of Google Calendar. It gives it additional features. And the other type of app draws information from Google Calendar to inform you of things you need to do while you are in the other app. Let's talk about the first one, which is how do you extend the capabilities of Google Calendar? Because Google Calendar is a pretty rich application all on its own. One way is by adding scheduling, and this is oh so powerful. We've all gotten into the email ping pong of trying to set up an appointment. We waste a lot of time and lose a lot of productivity just setting up meetings with emails going back and forth before you finally schedule something. A far more efficient way to do that is to use scheduling software. And there's a couple of good tools out there. I highly recommend a tool called Calendly. I use one called Book Like a Boss. And what they do is they create a page that looks like this. This is a link you can t send to somebody that says, if you want to have a meeting with me, here's my availability. Go in here and select one of these times for us to meet. Fill in your name, your email address, what we're meeting about, and then I'll let you know if that avail if I'm available at that time and we can have the meeting. And this software looks at open spots in my calendar that I've designated or times that I'm willing to meet with people, and then it reflects that information back to the originator. It's a brilliant use of technology. These tools save me countless, I don't know how many hours, but they probably saved me an hour a week of emails going back and forth as I'm setting up appointments. And you've all used it. We've all had appointments that we've set up using this technology and we realize just how efficient it is. The key to it being successful is accurate integration with Google Calendar. So if we take a look at my calendar app here inside of inside of Book Like a Boss, which is my tool, and I go into Manage Calendars, we can see that it is connected with my different Google Calendars. And you can choose which calendar you're going to connect it to. You don't necessarily want to have your personal calendar connected to a business Calendly account or a business uh, scheduling app account. But here you can see that it integrates perfectly with the app. Now the scheduling apps, for the most part, have two-way integration with Google Calendar. It, will, it draws information from Google Calendar and allows you to, allows the person viewing it to see your availability and to fill in and to request availability. And then it sends that information and actually creates a, an appointment within Google Calendar that's a, on hold until you verify that appointment. Then if you go into Google Calendar and change that appointment at some point in the future, then the app again talks back and forth to the originating person and Google Calendar if the appointment is, if the appointment is changed. So scheduling tools, I think, are one of the most important and one of the most valuable integrations that we can have with Google Calendar. And I will have links to the a few of those tools in the description. Now, another class of tool that will really benefit from integration with Google Calendar are communications apps, video conferencing apps. Now, built in to Google Calendar is Google Meet. So you can always create a video conference right away and schedule a video conference within the Calendar app. So that's a level of integration that happens right within the Google ecosystem. But if you're using an external app, something like Zoom, you also would want to be able to schedule the Zoom calls right within Google Calendar. Now, you can't do it if you're using the free version of Google of Google Calendar, but if you have the paid version, if you're using the Google, Google Workspace, then you can integrate Google Calendar and Zoom. You run the application, you run the installation, and once you're done, you have the option creating a new meeting to be able to add a Google Meet video conferencing uh, session as you as is normal. Everybody has access to that. But now, look here. In the drop-down menu, I can also add a Zoom meeting, which will talk. Now, Google Calendar will talk back to Zoom. It will set up the meeting, set up the meeting ID, all of the links, and they will all be included right within the appointment itself. Before we leave the communication space, Slack is a very powerful and very popular communications tool for team-based communications. You can, as you expect, integrate Google Calendar with Slack. Again, you just walk through an installation and permission process, and then you can incorporate Google Calendar into your Slack account. Now, what's the benefits? Well, Slack can then look at your existing calendar and let your team members know when you are in a meeting so that they won't be bothering you within Slack and asking you a bunch of questions. That sort of integration is all part and parcel of the Slack integration with Google Calendar, which is a well worthwhile integration to include. Now, everything that we've been talking about now has really been two-way communications where Google Calendar is able to talk to the application or the integration and the integration, for the most part, able to talk back to Google Calendar and exchange information, a two-way street.
There's also a lot of one-way streets in the Google Calendar integration world. Specifically, I'm thinking of our task apps, things like Trello and Asana, where we can we, we obviously want to have an integration between the task and when we're setting up a task that has a due date and Google Calendar so that we know that the due date is there. But the integration for the most part in these is not two ways. It's just one way where we set an appointment within the task app and that task app then publishes the information through to Google Calendar. If we make a change in the task app, it will change in Google Calendar. But if we make a change in Google Calendar, it won't often be reflected back in the task app. Let me show you what that looks like putting it together. Let's set this up inside of Trello. Now within Trello, you have something called power-ups, which are integration to external applications. There's a generic calendar power-up, which will work with Google Calendar and incidentally with other calendar applications. Once you've set that up, the power-up will generate a URL. This is a subscription feed. It's a fancy way of saying that when we make an appointment within Trello, that appointment will be sent to Google Calendar and the, it will create an event within Google Calendar with the details of the task that we've created in Trello. It's really simple to execute once you understand the basic process. All we have to do is head over into Google Calendar and we have to subscribe to a calendar. This calendar we're going to subscribe to is our Trello calendar, but we subscribe from URL. When we do that, we paste in the URL that Trello generated, add the calendar, and then in our list of available calendars, we see that we have the task apps made easy calendar that we just added from Trello. It's just that easy for us to set up an integration. Now, again, this is a one way integration. Pretty much every task app I know of works in the same way with a published calendar that you can subscribe to within Google Calendar. I know that's how we use Asana, which is our task manager for our team. And every other one that I've looked at has a very similar process. Now, the last one that I'm going to talk about is another one of these one-way integrations, and that is to one of my favorite apps, is to Evernote. Now, Evernote has this new homepage that they recently instituted just about a year ago. Now, this homepage has these widgets that are available to us, and one of the widgets has a that's available is a Google Calendar widget, which means I can see any obligations I have uh, within Google Calendar right here on my homepage within within Evernote. Now this only works with Google Calendar. And again, it is a one way integration, whereas Google Calendar is only sending information into Evernote to let me know exactly what my appointments and obligations are that day. But it is yet another one of the Google Calendar integrations. We have just barely scratched the surface on the integrations that are available in Google Calendar. And it's a good thing because the more things that we can integrate, the more tools, the more apps that we can integrate with Google Calendar, the more efficient we will end up being. So now when you're looking at any of the apps in your toolkit, you should be checking to see if there's Google Calendar integration and how you can invoke that integration. And indeed, if it makes sense, if it's something that works for you. And even if your tool, even if your app doesn't integrate natively with Google Calendar, if it doesn't have a link available, then third party automation tools like Zapier will often have an integration that you can put in place if you want to, if you want to have some form of integration between Google Calendar and that tool. I hope you found value in today's video. And if you did, a share and a like would be greatly appreciated. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. Now, before we leave, I have one last thing to mention, and that is every week at Dottotech, we do a weekly tutorial webinar on some aspect of productivity or content creation. It's called Webinar Wednesday. The link is right here, and you're invited to join us any Wednesday. They are free. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.